if it's creativity you're after, West Sussex has plenty to offer. There's a thriving community of talent across all artistic disciplines, and naturally, the county's rural and coastal landscapes provide endless inspiration. Down on the coast in Worthing at Colonnade House, I chatted with gallery manager Claire Halstead. Well, we're here in your lovely galleries at Colonnade House with this marvellous art behind us, which feels to me very much inspired by the sea. Yes, I would say that they, the artist has drawn inspiration from the sea, um, and people also draw inspiration from the downs. Um, but equally, there are plenty of people working and Worthing in very contemporary practices. And you'll see in this exhibition, um, there are people working in, in all sorts of ways. And here in Colonnade House, you've got 10 studio spaces that are fully occupied by all sorts of different artists. We have, and they are um, occupied by people working across the creative industries. So not just visual artists, illustrators, art directors, people working in animation, and across the board, really. Worthing really is becoming known for its creative industries, isn't it? Certainly. I mean, the advantage of uh, the galleries here is we're right on the high street, so anyone walking past can come in and we're very accessible. Presumably there are other galleries and exhibitions to visit as well, though, if you were going to come and make a, an artistic day of it. Well, there certainly are. There's the East Beach Gallery on the seafront, there's the Two-Faced Twins who rent a shelter on the, on the seafront, they're very popular. We've got commercial galleries here, we've got art space in the museum, um, the theatres are opening up a little exhibition space as well, and then we have outdoor gallery spaces on the seafront. Wonderful. To develop your own artistic skills, internationally renowned West Dean College, just north of Chichester, provides hundreds of short courses. Course director Rosemary Marley told me more. At West Dean we have an independent art college in the middle of an award-winning garden. And it really is so impressive when you drive in. You've got gorgeous Sussex landscape all around you and this yes. amazing building. We're obviously yes. here in the studio, which is we are. painting, which is, is immediately recognisable, but there's yes. all sorts of courses going on, aren't yes, there? Yes, there are. We, we offer courses in everything from um, ceramics through to um, jewellery making, blacksmithing, wood carving, furniture making, lots of different textile subjects. We also have music and gardening courses. Um, and creative writing. Some courses are one-day courses, um, up to weekends, three, four, five days. Um, people can choose whether they want to stay here or not because we do have accommodation on site. Okay. The painting courses take place often outside in the garden. You'll see people dotted around with easels and sketch pads. Um, and also we use it as a resource for perhaps finding um, natural dye materials um, for textile courses and other ways of integrating and looking at uh, a sort of very holistic view of um, using the environment and sustainable practice. It sounds so inspiring. I'm tempted to take away the catalogue and sign up immediately. Please do. We'd love you to. <laughs> All year round, there's art on display across West Sussex, both indoors and out. In Pulborough, I took a walk with Sussex sculptor Steve Gellio, the man behind the four-kilometre Pulborough Wild Art Trail. Oh, and here we are. It's one of the first of the, the big sculptures. Yes. Tell me a little bit about this one. So this is Last Moments of the Moth, um, and it's actually developed from slow motion capture of a bat hunting a, and catching a moth in flight. So each bat on there is part of that movement, the way the bat finds the moth and it wraps it up with its wings and then gobbles it. Wow. And what was the original intention for the trail? It was really to bring people to Pulborough and to encourage them to come by train if possible, um, walk from the train station through the village and down to the visitor centre on the RSPB reserve. So for bird watchers, this is an absolute dream walk, isn't it? It's fantastic. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, in my time I was working here, which was quite a few months, I saw some amazing things. I think, you know, bird-wise, my favourite was the short-eared owls. They were just fantastic. That's one of the great things about something like this, isn't it? It changes all the time with the seasons. So it really does. I mean, in the summer, you've got the blue demoiselle damselflies just down here. And, you know, it's buzzing with insects and birds and you know but winter on a frosty morning you get a bit of a mist um, and a very memorable walk along here in the frost one morning uh, with all the teasels and the discampsia grass just crusted like champagne with frost it was just beautiful oh, wonderful and we're very lucky today suddenly the sun's come out this afternoon so i think we should <laughs> take a walk and Absolutely. see what we can see yeah